Who is BYD and what is the Atto 3 electric SUV all about? But more importantly, is it worth paying 34 lakh rupees ex showroom for a brand that remains relatively unknown in the Indian market? Well guys, all your questions and our answers right here in this video. Before we move further with the video, let me tell you it's going to be a long video because I want to cover all the various aspects and the questions surrounding the company and the product here as well. We are in Chennai today, it's windy, it's rainy, but yeah, we need to shoot the car and experience the car for this video right away. Of course, you can jump to a particular section on the timeline you see on the screen right now, but I request and urge you to stay with us for the entire video because again, all your questions will be answered in this video right away. So first things first, let's talk about BYD. Now, BYD stands for Build Your Dreams and in case you didn't know, be ready for a surprise. They are the world's largest manufacturer of electric vehicles. They started as a company dealing with components of a mobile phone, shifting to battery operations and then to electric mobility space. They do make electric trucks, buses, cars, MPVs and so on. And they're present in as many as six continents globally. So, yeah, their presence is very much across the globe. In India, they entered over 20 years back, starting from the manufacturing of components for, for mobile phones, then to battery solutions, and then to the electric mobility space, electric buses, the E6 MPV, and their first electric car for private usage, the Atto 3. But I do agree, they're coming into a space that is basically ruled by other known brands. You have the Tata Nexon EV Max, you have the Hyundai Kona EV, you have the MG ZS EV, and then you have the compact offerings from the German rivals. And this space is basically a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. You cannot come into a space and launch a 34 lakh rupee SUV without having your brand amplification, in my opinion. So, yeah, the acceptability part will take time. You know, people searching for a electric mobility SUV in the price category will definitely think twice before going into a BYD because in your circle of friends, suppose you drive onto your Sunday brunch for networking, you will not end up doing networking, but you will end up answering a lot of questions on why you bought a BYD. You have to explain the company, you have to explain the background. So that might take uh, time in India. As a car, as a product, my verdict will take time coming in the video. But as a brand, yes, it is unfortunately unknown to a lot of people who are watching this video right now. I think you will agree with me. So that's the background. The company is solid and the entire ecosystem that requires to make an electric car they have it with them. So they make their own e-platforms, electric platforms. They have their own semiconductors manufacturing, the batteries, the blade batteries, by the way, the safest batteries in the world to the electric motor. So they do everything in-house. It is not outsourced. That is a good thing. But we Indians, sometimes we can be loyalists in terms of the brand we want. We have, we'll always think twice, thrice, four times before putting down 100 rupees for a thing. And this is actually about 34 lakh rupees. So don't get me wrong. The brand needs to work on telling Indians where they stand. But as a product, this one will stay for the verdict. So with the company profiling done, it's time to speak about the actual product and the rivals and the pricing and the deliveries and the bookings. So only one variant on sale, which is basically fully loaded, but it still misses out on features. I'll speak to that. I'll speak to you about that at a later stage. 33.9 lakh rupees extra room daily is the pricing which is definitely on the steeper side because you do have rivals coming in you have the hyundai kona which is still in the previous generation state in india unfortunately but you also have the solid mbzs ev and the even solid tata nexon ev max so yeah you do have options which are as much as six to eight lakh rupees cheaper but they do everything this one can do almost so yeah, 34 lakh rupees extra room daily, multiple color options on offer, including the shade of blue. You have a white and a shade of red as well, which are somewhere around here being shot by the other media houses. So in this segment, you do have this cheaper option I told you. And if you want to spend out more, you do have the more expensive options from Kia, the upcoming Hyundai option, of course, the Volvo XC40, but they do cost a lot. At the same time, for 34 lakh rupees extra room daily, you can go into a lot of other petrol power options, for example, the Volkswagen Tiguan. That's a good vehicle, but it's petrol powered. And if you spend a bit more after discounts, you can go for the German rivals, their entry level SUVs like the GLA or the Q3 or the X1. Do trust me, a lot of discount negotiations happen at the dealer end 
for the German luxury offering. So do not go by the sticker price. So that's about this segment. Uh, bookings had opened up around a month back when the car was launched, the electric car was launched and uh, the company claims they have 1,500 confirmed bookings. This is a big number again for a relatively unknown band in India and they say bookings uh, are in place so the deliveries will start by January that is next month. So 2023 is when the delivery will start and as of today as I speak to you they have over 20 plus outlets in India. Uh, again, networking is being done in terms of expansion, but yes, if you're in a smaller town where BYD is not present, you will of course look for other options, but they say they will be increasing at a rapid pace. Post this, I want to quickly wrap up the exteriors because we have shown you the exteriors multiple times, including in the walk-around review. From exteriors, I'll move to interiors in terms of both the rows and the uh, feature list. Then I'll move to the driving part in terms of performance and of course the driving part in terms of rider handling and then time for my verdict on the BYD or Atto 3. So sorry for that. Now size does matter and this is true for the Indian car segment as well. In that terms, in terms of dimensions, this is a bigger vehicle as compared to the ZS EV and the Kona EV. So you do have brownie points coming in over here. Now aesthetics, I'm not a big fan of the 2022 ZS EV. Uh, the earlier one was a better looking vehicle in my opinion. Likewise, Hyundai still sells the older Kona in India, not the new international model. And Hence, this one aesthetically wins the battle over here. It's a clean and a neat front-end design, not too radical, not too muscular. Of course, you do play with the DRL setup over here. No fog lamps, which I'm seeing in a lot of other SUVs nowadays. And of course, it's an electric SUV, so no grill like that up front. Side profile, definitely dominated by the 18-inch sporty, gorgeous alloy wheels, a highlight of the entire package. The tyres they come with, well, the brand is called Atlas. I do know about the brand, but the model of the tyres is actually called Batman. So, this one rides on 18-inch Atlas Batman tyres. Batman. So, now we'll move towards the rear of the Atto 3. But more than the front or the side of the BYD Atto 3, is the rear that really leaves an impression in my books. Look at the connected tail lights. Look at the DRL setup and this profile of the vehicle actually reminds me of a particular German compact SUV. I'll not name the brand, but definitely in my books, as compared to the other angles of the vehicle, this one is much, much better. And BYD is very proud of their name. So your Build Your Dreams logo comes in at this point. You have a proper spoiler. You have a shark fin antenna. Of course, you also have the roof rails coming in over here. So this wraps up to complete uh, quickly our perspective of the exteriors of the out of 3 out of 10 marks, I will give it approximately 8.5. Now, over time, the interiors of a car have become a more of a priority for a lot of Indian car buyers and I have good news for you. The interiors of the Atto 3, in short, are futuristic, they are funky and they will definitely impress you. A lot of party tricks to even impress your family members or your friends. For example, on the move or while the car is starting, you can actually do this. So, the screen over here, this massive screen over here can be turned like a vertical display or a horizontal display and just is something we have not seen in any other vehicle on sale in India. The touch reception is really nice and a lot of information on offer over here as well. At the same time, as much as I like the size of the screen, the size of the speedometer display is actually smaller than some of the other LCD screens we see on motorcycles in India. BYD, what are you doing? So yeah, this screen in contrast is small, but I think they wanted to make the whole area very minimalistic, not like the connected screens we see in some of the other cars in India. Now, next, look at the design of the AC vents. Not seen this ever before, the AC vents on the side or on the uh, center console as well. Near to them, around them are the rot rotary, rotary knobs to basically control the uh, speed of the fan. Again, something helpful and different. The gear lever, it is completely inspired by aircrafts and again, easy to use. It has the parking over here coming in and the drive neutral and reverse over here. The start stop button and a few more buttons which are very functional and easy to use. The steering wheel, I'm a fan of this in the way it looks and the way it feels flat bottom and lot of usable actual buttons from controlling your ADAS for the lane assist to the adaptive cruise control to, to rotating the screen to a 360 degree view. 
to the speedometer console display and so on. So everything comes in over here. The cameras, by the way, for the 360 degree are fantabulous in terms of the resolution. You can even record the video of the front of the car moving or you can take a picture as well on the move. It gets stored in the memory. Again, why haven't other people thought about this? Likewise, the door handles are unique. They also house the speaker and just pull them like this and the door opens super easily. Then you have these strings on the door pads and all the four doors. They help in keeping the bottles or other stuff inside. And for example, on a long drive, if you want to have fun with your family members, you can actually create your own tunes. All, of, all four of you playing in synchronization, create your own tune. The seats, again, need a special mention. Uh, the strings, by the way, are finished in red and you also have the red stitching on the seats over here for the contrast factor. Seats are big, they're comfortable, supremely comfortable. And at the same time, you don't have adjustable headrest. So that could be a small shortcoming for a lot of people. And likewise, let me give you a surprise. This one, in terms of the technology and the features, still doesn't, doesn't offer you wireless Android Auto or CarPlay. So BYD wants you to be connected and Okay, I just said BYD, so it's trying to talk to me. I'll switch off the car. So it wants you to be connected and the ports, the USB and the C type ports are very hard to access right over here. So this is something of an effort. The seats are not ventilated. They are not cool. I told you be ready for a surprise, BYD. Uh, cars costing half the price in India still offer you cool or ventilated seats. I do understand it's an international model, not made in India. It's assembled in India, but this feature could have been thought for. Likewise, this light, finish on the dashboard and the door pads it looks nice but this is a dirt magnet we are in india not in europe byd could have done something to to address this concern i'm very sure people will have a hard time keeping this area as clean as you see it right now apart from that on the space factor it's not a very tall suv but even then i stand six feet tall both the seats are powered by the way and i have ample amount of headroom good amount of shoulder space and the visibility factor is not affected as well. So I'll do one thing, I'll leave the seat for my driving posture and I'll go at the back to tell you if the back, speed, the back uh, seat can be good for you or your family members or not. Now because this is made on a proper electric platform, there are no unwanted humps or bumps on the floor over here. So this is a completely flat floor which means you as uh, a passenger, you can take your feet under the front seat. If a third person sits over here, he will have no issues with uh, a hump or a bump intruding into his or her privacy and overall with the front seat position for a tall driver I stand six feet tall an equally tall person can sit at the back and still have three to four inches of knee room left over here so if you are shorter than me or the driver driving the car is shorter than me the rear has ample amount of space on offer the seats like the front one I think they are good in terms of space uh, in terms of comfort as well adjustable headrest coming in over here but not over here you have your two charging outlets, a C-Type and a USB coming in over here and the same kind of AC vent design on the for the back seat passengers as well. Uh, comfortable armrest and the doors, again, they open in the same fashion. Not too wide, but yeah, it's not a tall SUV. So getting into the car for the elderly might be of a small concern or a small extra effort. The panoramic sunroof aids in terms of the airiness, but again, I would have appreciated adjustable headrest or slightly narrower seats to address the uh, claustrophobic uh, uh, feeling at the back. It's again not that bad like a sedan but yeah slimmer front seats definitely always add to the airy feel for the rear passenger. So overall I'm happy with the interiors in terms of space on offer. Look at this even my headroom head is not touching the roof in spite of being tall because the panoramic sunroof is away so not no issues on that front. Ample features apart from the ventilated seats I told you about but Overall, 34 lakh rupees extra room daily, you or your family members will not complain. So yeah, ample amount of space on the inside for passengers, but what about the boot space? By the way, one more feature in the kitty of the Atto 3 is the powered tailgate. With the second row in space, we have 440 liters of usable boot space, pretty good for the segment. And if you fold the second row, it goes to over 1000. Now, good things that you have these two pockets on both the sides which are separated by a proper net. So your small stuff doesn't run around the whole boot if when you're driving in traffic, that's a good point. There is no spare wheel in the Atto 3, but you do get a proper uh, kit, a puncture repair kit, as well as a tire inflator. So in case you do have a puncture coming in, that will take care of it. 
Now, you, the parcel tray is pretty big, so on the inside, you do can keep a lot of stuff. You can open the strings from both the ends and keep some small stuff which will not run around all over the place. So this is a pretty, pretty big uh, parcel tray coming in over here. By the way, all the four brakes on the four tires in the Ardo 3, they have disc brakes. So even safety uh, from that point of view is taken care of. Safety is further highlighted with as many as seven airbags. It's got a proper ADAS suit coming in. And for the global end cap ratings, this one scored five stars. So yes, the same car that sold in India got a five star rating. A uh, full ADAS suit and the normal driver aids like ESP, ESP and seven airbags coming in. So safety point of view, this car will take care of you, uh, take care of you and the family, including the blade battery setup. driving part of the Ato 3 now first thing first uh, I'm actually at highway speeds right now holding on 75 on the ECR or the East Coast Road so even at 75 there is a hint of uh, wind noise creeping in from somewhere on the right side so pro pro possibly the door beating needs to be fixed so yeah wind noise is very much there uh, the overall punch that you expect from an EV at this price point is missing uh, even in the sport mode there is a fraction of a disconnect uh, in terms of timing when you go down hard on the right pedal versus the actual momentum coming in uh, this wasn't expected don't get me wrong once you get going this is a fast electric crossover no two is about it but that the feeling of being pinned into the seat the moment you press the right pedal comes in after a fraction of a second uh, the certified range uh, uh, is impressive and BYD says it will go over 400 kilometers in real world conditions and I do understand it's possible for example since morning uh, we've eaten up 23% of the battery and in 23% of battery we've done 87 kilometers so this includes high speed runs acceleration runs leaving the car on with the AC running as it was raining outside we were shooting the car so with all those scenarios put in it is doing very nice so for a typical driving scenario 400 plus is possible with the ac running so that should keep you happy uh, light controls of the car of course you can adjust the steering feedback from this huge screen over here how do you want the steering feedback to be there are driving modes which uh, i'm using uh, i'm using sport right now so sport eco and your normal driving modes and depending on the mode you pick your punch pick changes depending on the mode of the steering you pick your, your effort to turn the steering changes and overall uh, since morning we were in traffic and then out towards ECR overall the effort required to drive the Ato 3 is less so light controls and a silent operation just means that overall fatigue levels of driver and passengers in this car will remain less visibility is something I am uh, happy about uh, the windscreen is huge you sit slightly higher up so your visibility all around is terrific you also have the benefit of using a 360 degree camera in tight situations so in terms of visibility factor while driving the car in traffic or on highways no complaints whatsoever from the Ato 3 and now on the ride and handling part now uh, the ride comfort overall like we are crossing a bridge right now see the so the cement joints you can make out possibly they do get absorbed in a nice manner uh, but the issue is with the sharp undulations or the bigger potholes where they do get felt in a more easy and pronounced manner on the inside so that is something uh, could have been better with the suspension tuning or possibly higher profile tires but for most usage patterns I don't think customers or your family members will have a reason to complain in terms of handling approaching a long flowing left hander because the batteries are below on the floor level the center of gravity is low and this does help you understand but again just be careful this is a heavy SUV and body roll definitely remains so if you're changing lanes enthusiastically or you want to hit a set of twisties in an enthusiastic manner do keep 
the body roll factor in mind but for most users who won't be pushing the car like like a sports car this will just keep you happy so it's basically a very easy to drive everyday car with ample comfort levels and it will do the job of handling whenever you require in some average kind of manner by the way from one of these buttons behind the gear lever you can also adjust the level of regen that you want uh, there is a high level and there is a standard level in the high level whenever you lift up the right pedal the regen happens in a slightly more aggressive manner thereby helping you convert uh, energy which would have been wasted otherwise into possibly usable electric energy of course as expected you also have a proper adas setup in the atto 3 so uh, from the adas suit i did end up using a couple of features uh, on today's drive adaptive cruise control works flawlessly uh, all the way to as low as 0 kmph and then it will start picking up speeds if the front traffic of the vehicles in front of you start moving so adaptive cruise control is present it gets activated from the switch on the left side of the steering wheel likewise uh, you also have your lane assist and lane keep function and then other things uh, like uh, uh, collision warning and collision prevention so the whole suit of adas is very much there but most of the inner cities the traffic uh sense and pedestrians means that uh, not it has is not always very useful and can take you off guard for example a person coming in front of you but you know you will make it from the side or he walk through but it has will still kick in so you can turn off a few things from the uh, central screen which i have already done but the adaptive cruise control it works flawlessly and finally time for a verdict on the BYD Auto 3 is it worth paying 34 lakh rupees for this one Well, for a moment, just park the pricing out of the picture, and then look at the vehicle. No doubt, it's an all-rounder electric crossover, not an SUV electric crossover in the segment. It looks nice, and it is supremely safe. Five-star global NCAP rating, as many as seven airbags, a full ADAS suit on offering, and of course, the safest set of batteries you can rely on in the industry anywhere in the world. They are so nice that even Tesla might use the same kind of technology from BYD. for the upcoming offerings for countries like germany so that speaks a lot about what is on offer the interiors they are funky they are futuristic even if missing on a few features so overall good performance excellent range and as a product i can't really find a big fault in the auto 3 yes it is expensive by approximately 4 to 6 lakh rupees as 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 compared to what it should have been in the first place and yes byd's network is really very small in the market right now but If you want to but if you're willing to answer hundreds of questions that people might ask you if you bring this home then yes you can possibly walk into a BYD showroom if it's in your city right now to check out the Auto 3. Well if you're still watching this video a big thank you from all of us at 91 Beams. We do have detailed videos of the MV ZS EV and of course the Volvo XC40 Recharge as well. So do not forget to check out both the videos of the XC40 Recharge and of course the new MV ZS EV which are live on 91 Beams. YouTube channel